In this tutorial, I'll walk through step-by-step -step on how I built a 48-cell lithium-ion battery pack out of 18650 cells. I'll talk about the mechanical structure, how I welded the cells together, setting up the battery management system, and the push-button on-off switch. Make sure to stay tuned for the next video where I do a deep dive on the engineering design that went into this battery. Links for all the tools and all the parts are in the description below. First up is the plastic cell holders. You want to clip these together in the shape of your battery. Next, using the plastic clips as a guide, put the nickel strip down, mark it with a sharpie, and then cut it to length. This is how the batteries are shipped to me. These are Samsung 30Q18650 battery cells. The next thing you want to do is lay the cells out in a plastic tray, get them all lined up, get your multimeter out, and measure and make sure each cell is reading somewhere in the 3 to 4 volt range. If it reads anything less, it's a damaged cell, you should set it aside. Grab a sharpie and label the polarities of each cell. This will be convenient later on in the build. Next, load the 18650 cells into the plastic holders. You'll notice four facing up and four facing down. This is due to the battery design. I have four cells in parallel groups that are joined together in series. The cells are joined together with the spot welder. Do a few test welds to make sure the nickel strips are well secured to the cell tops. A good weld should hold up to a medium strength tug. Here, you can see a slow motion shot of the multi-pulse weld. Cells are joined together in parallel first. Each cell should have two spot welds. Each spot weld makes two marks. Do one weld on each cell and wait a minute or so before welding the second spot on the cells in order to minimize heat generation. Heat is the enemy of the lithium cell. It's always best to make sure things are cool. Next, add the nickel bus bar strips that join the cells in series. Use the same approach of one weld per cell, wait a minute, and come back to make a second weld. If necessary, add a secondary nickel strip to the serial connection in order to boost up the current carrying capability. And just keep welding. There is a lot of spot welds that need to be made to make a battery pack. One thing to note, if the spot welder starts to make bad welds, or the weld tips start to look really black and oxidized, then give it a quick file. The tips are made of copper, so they'll clean right up. At this point, it's just rinse and repeat. Push the cells into the plastic cell holders, cut the bus bars to length, and make the welds. The best way to go about this for large battery packs is to break it up into small sections that can be worked on individually and then later joined together. Working on a really large battery pack all together can be quite cumbersome. I'll skip over the rest of the welding as it's pretty repetitive from here on out. Use your battery as a length gauge and mark the end of the cable where you want to strip it. Use a knife or any stripping tool to expose the base copper. Lay down nickel strips on the last parallel cell group on the battery. This needs to be done for both the plus and the minus output ends. Using painter's tape, lift off the bus bar. Solder on the output wires to these bus bars. We use the tape method since soldering generates a lot of heat and heat is bad for the cells. By doing this step offline, we don't risk damaging the cells. It's important to make sure that the cable is well soldered to the nickel bus bars. Make sure you hold the soldering iron for an extra second or two to really let the solder flow and wick around. When you're all done, make sure to clean up the extra flux. Spot weld on this last nickel bus bar. Don't forget to take some time and admire your handiwork. Use a multimeter and measure the voltage from end to end of the battery pack. Make sure it's what you expect. Solder up the battery output connection to the battery management system. The BMS makes sure that the cells are charged properly and not damaged during regular use. In line to the final output of the battery, connect up in serial the electronic switch. This lets you turn the battery pack on and off. Connect all of the balance lines of the BMS to the serial connections of the battery. These will have to be soldered on, so make sure the wire is joined far from the cell ends to minimize the heat absorption by the 18650 cells. Start to straighten up some of the wires. You want to make sure this thing looks good. Grab your multimeter again, and try out the electronic switch. Make sure that the output of the battery turns on when the switch is turned on. Grab a couple zip ties and crank them down on the battery pack. 
you want to make sure this thing is secure. Solder up the final output connector. Make sure to use heat shrink. It'll prevent shorts between the phases and as well provide a little bit of strain relief for the soldered joint. Repeat for the other phase of the connector. Like the other soldered bus bar, you'll want to make sure that sufficient solder flows into the joint. It'll take some time for the soldered iron to heat up the connector and the cable since they're both quite large and contain a lot of thermal mass. Here's another good opportunity to check out your battery pack. The last step is to use a large piece of heat shrink over the whole pack as a final layer of protection. This makes sure the cell ends won't short out to foreign objects and provides further mechanical support. And that's it, your new battery is ready to use. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned for part 2 of this video where I do a deep dive on the engineering and design of this battery pack.